We've explored many competitive decks throughout January 2014's Fire Water format, but underneath the surface of Tier 1 lie several other strategies that are strong rogue contenders, some of which even winning a YCS. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in, because anything is possible. Welcome! to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Yeah! Boo, did I scare you Duel Links players? That's right, Harpy is playable in TCG as well. So if you're unfamiliar, around this time, Harpy got a series of legacy support cards that are honestly Reddit customs. They are unbelievably powerful, and they were so strong that they rocketed this deck to a national victory. That's the list that I'm playing here today, and I could not be happier to be repping it. I love the way this deck plays, I love what it's capable of, and I'm excited to put my Duel Links knowledge to the test. Though, honestly, we don't have access to Cyber Slash, so what's even the point? So it all begins with this card, Hysteric Sign. This card is shocking in terms of what it is allowed to do. When it's activated, you get an Elegant Egotist from deck to hand, which allows you to extend. And then during the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was sent there from the hand or field this turn, add up to three Harpy cards with different names from your deck to your hand. Big surprise, that's easy to do. Harpy's Hunting Ground allows you to destroy spell traps whenever you summon a Harpy Lady monster. You can clear out your opponent's back row or your own if you've got something like Hysteric Sign. Hysteric Sign isn't the only impressively powerful Harpy card they got as a result of this legacy support. They also got Hysteric Party. This card can be activated by discarding a card and special summons as many Harpy Lady monsters as possible from your graveyard. It's an AoE Call of the Haunted at a time when Soul Charge was just about to be released, arguably the first deck that could put a card like this to use. But it doesn't stop there. The new monsters are also impressively powerful. Harpy Channeler allows you to discard a Harpy to specially Harpy from your deck in defense position. Harpy Dancer allows you to target a wind you control, return it to the hand, then perform a normal summon of a wind, which triggers hunting ground again. Harpy's Pet Dragon is an easily summonable seven star monster, which opens up the rank seven pool. And as a result, we're able to play really powerful end game bosses like the rank four lightning key door and Ice Beast Zero Fine, alongside Harpy's Pet Phantasmal Dragon, Big Eye, and of course, Mecha Phantom Beast Draco Sack. So with that, let's do the card by card. Two card card D, still not sold on this card. Uh, two Cyber Harpy Lady. This card is named Harpy Lady, which means it can be summoned with Egotist. Usually you want to be summoning Harpy Lady 1, but if you're playing around Overworked, you don't. Uh, three Harpy Channeler, two Harpy Dancer, three Harpy Queen that searches Harpy's Hunting Ground, and one of the Garnet. We're playing one Egotist, three Hysteric Sun, three pot of duality your first turn is usually setting back row like Icarus attack fiendish chain and bottomless trapple so it doesn't matter that you can't make big combos with channeler turn one triple upstart goblin a bottomless double fiendish chain triple party double Icarus triple reckless greed one solemn warning and one torrential tribute it doesn't matter that you're losing your draw phase because you're adding cards from your deck to your hand with a hysteric sign anyway in the side we've got the maxis the Ryo the mere mellow the dimensional fissure two mystical space typhoon two black horn of heaven a full house double overworked for those pesky fire fists one trap hole like normal trap hole that's your search target off of mere mellow if you've already exhausted your bottomless a uh, one trap stun and of course one trap tricks trap hole nightmare newly released in the extra we've got just about every four you could imagine including some weird corner cases like Ouroboros, harpy's pet phantasmal dragon zero fine and key dory and of course some powerful sevens including some deep cuts like number 74 master of blades so with that let's see if my's deck from 2002 can win in 2014 all right Another week of not having to adore in the shirt of shame cannot complain and we're going back to a deck that we haven't actually talked that much about since the banning of Spellbook of Judgment and the limitation on Spellbook of Fate and that's Spellbook. So this is a deck that was still seeing moderate success 
Pass. It was still topping multiple tournaments, but it wasn't as flashy because obviously in the wake of like Dragon Rulers getting just completely annihilated, that was really where this deck would shine the most, but it just didn't have the same flair when you couldn't judgment for six and just win the game automatically. And with Fate being at one, controlling your resources was more important than ever. So this is what players decided to pivot to once we got to this point in the timeline. So I'm gonna be playing this against Joseph playing Harpies. I have no idea how this one's gonna go, but we'll have to see. Let's do the card by card. So first up we have Breaker. Breaker is a spellcaster, so it helps facilitate all the spell books, but we also just have a way to just break back row, which is pretty nice. Just a sizable body as well, which is perfectly okay. We wanna spend most of our normal summons though, of course, on Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. Just does everything you could want for the deck. A new inclusion though is Temperance of Prophecy. I don't believe we saw this in uh, our previous versions, and if we did, we just never summoned it. During your main phase, if you have activated a Spellbook spell card previously this turn, you can tribute this card. Special summon a level five or higher light or dark spellcaster type monster from your deck. You cannot special summon another level five or higher monster during the turn you activate this effect. So what you can do is after activating any of your spell books, you can sack this off for either High Priestess of Prophecy, which we all know and love, but better is the World of Prophecy. This card is insane. I don't know how they weren't playing this before. Maybe it wasn't out, but I don't care. This card is nuts. I really hope we get to summon it. When it's special summoned by the effect of a spellcaster type monster or a spellbook spell card, you can target two spellbook spells in your grave. Add those targets to your hand. You can't special summon other monsters to turn. You activate this effect. When you add cards to your hand by this effect, you can reveal four spellbook spell cards with different names in your hand. Destroy all other cards on the field. That is an insane effect. And because you're getting two of them back, it's not difficult to achieve that. You're going to be left with a 29. You added two cards to your hand. You're going to be able to set up and it is just game over if this hits the field. That's it for the monsters though. I mean, that's really all we need. Spellbook has been notorious for playing a very low monster count. Now let's get to the spells, which there are 21 of. Book of Moon, double MST, one duality, which I find very funny. Triple Spellbook Library of the Crescent as our good spellbook starter. We have two Eternity. Uh, Eternity is still very important just to be able to manage our banished resources. One copy of Fate. Like I said, managing your resources is very important because you can't just keep adding fates anymore. You need to make sure this is constantly getting in rotation, either if you banish it to get it back with Eternity or setting it back on the bottom of your deck with Grand Spellbook Tower. We then also have Spellbook of Life still at one as well as Spellbook of Power because these are like the utility ones. Triple Secrets to search any of our cards. Triple Master to copy secrets, let's be honest. We can copy some other things as well. Double Copies of Wisdom. This is good to make sure our monsters stick. Double Tower because we want to just draw two cards every turn. And then the traps, we have Bottomless Fiendish Chain. Triple Mind Crush is a very interesting call, but there are a lot of decks during this time that are adding cards to hand that just by default, you're going to know what they're adding. So this allows you to control the game a little bit more. So I can see it. Mirror Force, Double Right Geki Break. This may seem odd, but there are instances where you have cards that are just dead, like maybe an excess copy of Tower, maybe an excess Spellbook Library of the Crescent on turn two or three. So our Geki Break allows you to turn that into a way to destroy another card. And lastly, a copy of Solemn Warning. The extra deck, let's be honest, we're probably never going to use, but we do have Black Rose, a Crimson Blader, Scrap Dragon, a Hyper Librarian, and a Tempest Magician. And for the Xyz, we have Abyss Dweller, Digosto Phoenix, Downward Magician, Herald of Pure Light, Hierophant of Prophecy, again, never summoning this card, uh, Mecha Phantom Beast, Draco Sack, we made a seven, it's probably gonna be this one, or of course, Big Eye, 101, a Shining Elf, which is, you know, kind of relevant. We can make it with two of the Magicians and it's a Spellcaster and Zen Mains. Then the side, we have a second breaker for back row heavy matchups, a DD Crow for uh, graveyard control, double effect Baylor, just in case we need more effect negation. Dimensional Fisher is just very funny because all the spells will still go to grave. Uh, obviously for stuff like life, it's not ideal, but that could come up. Another MST, Chain Whirlwind. Don't know why we're still playing this. Triple Overworked is very good in this format because there's a lot of things that just modulate the attack of monsters. So this could come in. Triple Rivalry of Warlords, because of course we're playing all spellcasters, so this doesn't affect us in the slightest. A Soul Drain to deal with the graveyard and Transmigration Prophecy to act as another DD Crow, but it hits two cards instead of one. Hopefully I can do this deck justice once more, but uh, without judgment and without multiple fates, it's probably not gonna go too great. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to do it. Well, buddy, uh, don't know how you did it, but somehow you convinced me that Harpy is a playable, viable deck. And here we are playing Harpy in History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Did not think I would ever be uttering those words. Maybe in History of Jank, but not this series. It, it was around, you know, it... This is something. Yeah, I definitely think uh, Legendary Collection Joey's World did a lot of heavy lifting with, uh, what, Harpy Channeler, Harpy Dancer, and uh, some of these cards, you read them, they, they're kind of crazy. And so I guess it's not really too surprising that it actually won a YCS. Yes. So maybe we'll get to see that in full force here. I certainly hope so. The deck you're playing is 
strange, to say the least. Is it, though? It, I mean, it was one of the best decks, and then definitely a fall from grace now that Spellbook of Judgment is banned. It's weird it took us this long to show this off, yeah. but I'm just excited to get into it. Let's see what happens. Shout the patron. It is Bring Back Auction Series. Yo! <laughs> We're trying, buddy. We're trying. Let's go! <laughs> buddy, do you have the hands up? Uh, I I do. I'm going to go with Odd. It is Odd. It was a, it was a one. A four? I don't know. It's the one okay. series you got to bring back to give Danny something to do on stream. Oh, don't do that. Well, in all fairness, I thought it was going to be seven for the number of uh, stars on Harpy's Pet Dragon to make your rank seven. Yeah, we're not so. we're not doing that. We'll, uh, we'll see. I'll draw because we actually don't get to draw for turn going first very much longer, buddy. A few episodes from now, we hit uh, Duelist Alliance format. And at that point in time, you lose the first turn draw going first. True. It took how many years? 13 years for them to remove that to realize it was broken. Yep. Whatever. Uh, good luck, buddy. I am going to start off by activating a good Yu-Gi-Oh card, Spellbook Library of the Crescent. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, so let's go ahead and start revealing here. We're going to go ahead and reveal ourselves a copy. I forgot there's a macro for this. Let me redo this. Let's reveal a copy of Secrets. I guess I'll go Master. And for my last pick, I'll go for Fate. One of those will randomly get added to my hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, going to the grave. Uh, not ideal, to say the least. It's still a bit awkward. Uh, I'm gonna go for it anyway. I'm gonna reveal Master, Fate, and Tower, and Special Summon Priestess. Mm -hmm. uh, I do need a Spellcaster in order to activate this copy of Spellbook of the Master. I will reveal the fate that you know about. Sure. And we're going to copy Crescent. Gotcha. So I'm going to go ahead and get this back here so I can do the macro once more. So we'll go Secrets. We will go Wisdom. And we will go Master. Why not? Mm-hmm. All right, finally, secrets. After 10,000 years. Yes. Yes. Secrets is All fine. Right. Uh, we will get... Mm, this is actually tricky now. I already played the Priestess. All right, we'll just go for Blue Boy. And then uh, we'll trigger Blue Boy mm -hmm. uh, on Summon here. Get ourselves another search. Have basically everything I want at this point. One of the big differences with this deck now is that fate is limited. So that means I need to be very careful with how I manage my resources. Mm -hmm. I am going to, with Blue Boy, grab myself a copy of probably Master just to have that for next turn. So yeah, we'll grab that. Uh, we're going to fire the Spellbook Tower. Yep. I'm going to set... Eh, this is tricky. Uh, you do have Hunting Ground, potentially. I'll set two back row, and that will be my turn. If that was Spellbook of Judgment, that turn would have been insane. Okay, stand by main. Uh, okay, well, uh, Hunting Ground. <laughs> well, uh, here we go. Uh, I'm going to activate Upstart Goblin here. I'll gain a 1,000. It's fine. Oh, my God. Uh, okay. I'm going to normal summon Harpy Channeler. So you're going to have a mandatory effect here on Hunting Ground. What would you like to target? Uh, I'd like to go for this one. Uh, in response, I'm going to MST your Hunting Ground so you don't get the effect. Sure. Yeah, fuck it. We'll fate. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, are we going for uh, three? I'm going to go for three. I'll banish it. Sure. Uh, what you got? I'm going to activate Duality here. Sure. Ooh, another upstart. Kinda. I think the upstart's the move. Ooh, these are crappy. All right, I'm going to grab queen. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to activate queen. Get another hunting ground? Sure. Yes. Then I'm going to I, pass turn. I believe that queen is like one of the best monster like field spell surgers in the whole game. Oh, yeah. She's locked into harpies, which is like the downside, but you know, it's still pretty good. All right, so we'll draw. Standby, I get to trigger tower here. Uh, so I'm going to put fate back on the bottom Yep. and we'll draw one, uh, main one. Can I lethal you? I do not know. Let's find out. Uh, I'm going to go activate eternity. I'm going to target secrets. Okay. So we'll get this back. Activate secrets. I think I just go for another blue boy off of this. Uh, we'll normal summon him trigger let's grab ourselves a you get fate into the rotation here eventually i'll grab myself 
eternity off of this. Yep. I already used it once, though, but I do have a master from last turn. So I'll copy secrets. I'll grab the fate. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to overlay these two. See, we got in a rank two pool here. Uh, nothing too spectacular. I'm kind of shocked they took Gachi out of the extra deck. I thought Gachi was actually not terrible. Uh, instead, however, I'm actually going to go for Digusto Phoenix, just to put you on a bit of a clock. And we'll go uh, detach, then battle. So 15, 15, and 25. Okay. Second main, I have two sets Jeez. once again. And I will throw it back to you. Stand by me. I'm going to call Hunting Ground. You got it. Let's see the hand. Wow. Dancer, card, card. Oh, Drew the Dragon. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> right, this is, sure. uh, this is a fine. rough one for sure. Okay, so the set card is Fate. Uh, I'm going to normal card, card here. Normaling card, card. I know there's like nothing else in your hand. Sh sure, that's fine. I'll set one. Okay. I'll card, card. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Stand by, trigger fate. Yeah. Or uh, tower, excuse me. Uh, I'll put back the secrets. Sure. I'll uh, greed here. Okay. And you've got it. Well, that was a close one. I, I, you know, extremely close. I Down to the wire, actually. I was starting to sweat a bit. Fate, fate, what can you do? Oh, this one's looking a little better. Okay, we're gonna go stand I by main. I disagree. I think this is much worse. All right, we're going to set four. Uh, okay. Normal card, card D. Oh, great. Yeah, that's a lot better. <laughs> all right, an interesting start. All right, back to you. That's probably like the best start that that deck has in all honesty. All right, main one. Wow, this is actually garbage. What the fuck do I do with this hand? <laughs> this is so shit. I'm going to set two cards and pass the turn. <laughs> you got it, buckaroo. I'll draw. Stand by main. Yep. This is the spell book I remember. <laughs> All right, shit, let's go. Harpy Queen. Fuck, yep. Grab Hunting Ground, anything here? Uh, I have Mind Crush for Hunting Ground. Oh, that sucks ass. I really did want to resolve that. Uh, here's my hand. Dancer, oh, what the fuck? All right, sure. Dancer I mean, party cool. sign. I just can't really do too much with it yet. Let's go Reckless Greed. Sure. I uh, will draw two here. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to activate Hysteric Sign. We're going to grab Egotist. Yep. Uh, this let's... card is wild to me. The it's fact that so people good. were playing magical hats to trigger this at one point is hilarious. We're going to go Dancer. Uh, we're going to Egotist. Going to grab uh, Harpy Lady 1. Okay, so everything's buffed currently. Very slightly, yes. Since that's the case, I'm going to activate Overworked here. Oh my <laughs> god, that's so funny that I get to follow it up with Hysteric Party. No, I figured you had one if I had All right, we're, we're going to send a Hysteric Party. Yeah, 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 yeah. Harpy and Harpy and Harpy. You really boarded into Overworked. You, yo, you thought you were I slick. <laughs> All right, I shit. thought I was until you had hysteric party. Let's let's go to battle. Uh, fifteen. This is a lot. Yeah, fifteen, sixteen, twenty-two. That is correct. Uh, second main, we're gonna overlay for tornado dragon, popping our own hysteric sign. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm just kidding. We actually are gonna do something though. Uh, I'm gonna overlay the harpy queen and the harpy lady one uh, to make uh, diamond dire wolf to pop uh, the hysteric sign. Yeah, we're gonna pop him and the uh, oh wow, we can actually target the uh, harpy dancer. Uh, we're not going. You to, could. Uh, okay. Uh, we're gonna go for hysteric sign. Uh, we're gonna get at the end of the turn three harpy cards with different names. <laughs> So fucking dumb. I'll just set so one. Dumb. I'll go to end phase. I'll resolve hysteric sign. This is like your own spell book of judgment. I'll grab this. <laughs> we will grab this. And shit. I mean, those are all the ones I want. Let's grab another dancer. Yeah. I, I think things are going well for you. They're going all right. Back to you. Okay. Uh, hysteric party doesn't destroy them. It, it's just like call the haunted basically for all your harpies, right? Yep. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, we'll draw. It's like three Call of the Haunteds. Yeah, that's true. Fair. It's it's like five. It's it's like Soul Charge, which we will be seeing very shortly, actually. Anything in standby? No. Okay. Main one. Uh, I will activate Spellbook Library of the Crescent. That is fine with me. I needed some card to get things going here. So we're going to go Secrets, Tower, Fate. Sure. You can have this one. Thank you. Appreciate it. I will Normal Summon Temperance of Prophecy. 
Whoa, that's a spellcaster, so we'll just solemn that. Yeah, I had a feeling. Okay, so we tried. It was fun. That card requires me to have other cards. 2,700, huh? Yeah. Uh, I was going to try to do something cool. I was going to try to do something cool, but I, I am dead. I just, There's nothing else I can fucking do. <laughs> that's this deck, I guess. going well uh well, game I like one how... i body you game two you body me uh I mean, at least we got to see like harpy pop off right i mean you could have kept going if i actually yeah. had a card to play dying by the hands of a normal summon who would have thought uh, i will go first let's hope for the best yeah i gotta tell you i mean what i like the most about Yu-Gi-Oh during this period is that it's really close it could go either way all right speaking of which uh magician effect awesome yeah sure okay we'll get secrets activate secrets yeah yeah all yeah. Oh, this is fine i will get master i will activate master i will reveal wisdom uh with secrets i will add myself uh, probably have to go for fate to have some level of protection here so i will in fact do that uh then i'm going to set Three. Ah, I'm actually going to set four in the back oh row. I don't God. fear hunting ground. Go for it, buddy. All right. Stand by me. Uh, normal channeler. That's pretty good. Uh, we'll fate here. For two? Oh, for two. You fool. I'll set her. All right. Well, that does accomplish your objective. Um, okay. I'd rather banish her, but. Let's duality. I have no response. Oh, those are three shit tier ones. Take the uh, pet dragon. Take the pet dragon. I'm going to grab the queen. <laughs> sure. Uh, I activate queen. Hunting grab ground. hunting ground. I will activate hunting ground. I have no response. One, two, three. Back to you. Three fucking back row. God help me. All right, I will draw. Yes. That's maybe the best draw on my deck. I <laughs> will activate secret. <laughs> uh, off the top. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. Always rewarded, buddy. Always rewarded. Uh, we'll grab master, I suppose. Yeah, we'll do that. Sure. Uh, master reveal life. Copy secrets. Yup. I will grab. Uh, you think what's uh Chandler's defense is like thirteen, right? Uh, thirteen. Yes. Uh, in that case, I'm gonna grab tower here. Okay. I am going to normal summon Temperance of Prophecy. Then I will attempt to use the effect of Temperance of Prophecy. Kind of whack. I think I have to solemn this. That's fine. We tried to live the dream. Okay. I will activate tower. Yep. I'm going to put blue boy to defense. Sure. And I will pass it to you. Okay. Let's try to MST this card. Doesn't really do much, but I guess I will chain wisdom targeting blue boy. I will make it immune to traps. Sure. Why not? Uh, hysteric party. I'm going to discard pot. For one, so you get queen and then you trigger hunting ground. <sighs> I'll space Hysteric Party. Sure. Draw for turn? Yep. Stand by main. Be a good one. I'm going to flip summon Chandler. Thankfully, this does not trigger Hunting Ground. Thankfully, indeed. Egotist. That, however, will trigger Hunting Ground. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm not falling for Overworked again. Oh, I guess it wouldn't matter because we already have the Hunting Ground out. Uh, let's go for Harpy Lady 1. Okay. Uh, we'll trigger Hunting Ground targeting this one. It is Mirror Force. I'm oh, very greedy. Thank God. You really were, my lord. All right, we get to make some fours here. Not that it really accomplishes too much. Correction, you get to make a four. Don't yeah. get too excited. Uh, let's go to combat. Hit in here. Down. And then I'll, I'll take... hit in for 10 quadrillion. Uh, so it's 14 plus 3, 17 plus 2 is 19. That's actually quite big. All right, second main. Let's make we going for? Kidori. Oh, Kidori's a good one. All right, I'm going to activate Kidori. We're going to target your Grand Spellbook Tower. Goes at the top of the deck, right? That's yeah. fucking annoying. Sure. <laughs> going to do our best to Yada lock you here. Uh, back to you. What'd you draw? Could be literally anything, buddy. Uh, but I will say I appreciate it because I can activate Spellbook of Life because you gave me a Spellbook card. Yeah, there was no way for me to prevent that from happening. So I'll banish Blue Boy, bring back Temperance. I'll trigger Temperance. Uh, let me think. Does this get banished? No, it does not. Okay. We will go for it, I guess. So let's bring out the big one. 
Let's bring out fucking the world. Oh my god, you're playing this card. Yeah, we're playing it. Uh, sadly, I'm not going to get to do the cool effect that I was trying to board wipe you, but uh, I do still get to use it because it was special summon off a spellcaster. You can target two spellbooks in grave and add them to my hand. So we're going to get Jeez. secrets and we're going to get probably fate here as well. I also just get master, but yeah, we'll get fate back. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll go secrets. Uh, mm -hmm. I will get blue boy because I have not normaled yet this turn. Uh, activate blue boy. Yes. Ah, I see. I've gone through both copies of Master. That is kind of a problem. Uh, in any case, that's fine. I will grab Spellbook of Eternity in that case. So Chidori is a... It's not a wing beast. It is a thunder. So it's not getting the buff from Hunting Ground. Uh, we're good there. So I guess we just go to battle from this position. I will go... World in. I'll take what uh, a thousand, thousand here. Yep. Sure. And then an extra five. And then second main. I'm just gonna set one activate tower. Throw it to you. Well, it was a sick draw, but I don't think it's gonna be enough while you have the uh, the fate set. That is correct. Let's just get rid of some of these, and we'll pop her. Mm-hmm. Back to you. Standby, tower. Let's put fate back on the bottom. I do have to close it out, and I do not have a way to currently do that. I've got, what, 3,400, so I just need a little bit extra damage. All right, uh, eternity for secrets. And then we will go secrets. Masters are all used up at this point. Uh, I am going to go for fate here. And uh, I cannot kill you in this circumstance, so I will just go for 34 again. All right, I'll take it. Got you on a fate lock, but it's hopefully going to have to be enough. Uh, go ahead. Ah, uh, the absolute worst card I could have drawn. <laughs> oh, man. What a poetic ending to this one. <laughs> That was interesting. I got to summon the world, which I never thought I was going to be able to do. So that was fun. Uh, this is a card that we didn't get to see in the original build of the deck because they actually just didn't play it. Uh, you didn't need it when you had judgment. It just sort of like slowed you down. But after getting fate limited and losing judgment, you sort of need to have like another plan besides just like priestess, right? And mm -hmm. world is kind of a fucking crazy boss monster. 29 adds two spell books to hand. If you have four in hand, when you do that, you literally board wipe the field which is nuts. Uh, and then you could just set up if you get like tower and stuff. You're just in full control of the game at that point. House of a card. Uh, we got to see it. And uh, even with only one fate, as long as you're managing the resources properly, like it's not too difficult to keep it in rotation. I struggled a little bit in the beginning of this game, but then uh, after uh, the world came down, that pretty much uh, fixed everything. This deck is still fine. It's like not fantastic. Uh, it does have the ability to beat uh, some of the other uh, meta threats, but I mean, the loss of judgment really puts it back into yeah. the same space that it was in uh, pre-judgment, which is not a yeah. particularly good place to be. You uh, can definitely feel it just like seeing how the way these games played out. So many instances, like I wish I could have searched judgment just to refill my hand and you just don't have it. So you have to be a lot more cognizant of what resources you're, uh, or in what positions, right? Because the banished zone for eternity, the grave to make sure fate has enough numbers uh what you're putting back on bottom with tower uh mm -hmm. they all matter and uh one little slip up can actually cause you the game but your deck uh game two you looked unbeatable i'll be honest <laughs> yeah i mean when it goes off it goes off uh just the ability to like bring like soul charge with hysteric party uh trigger hysteric sign to draw a whole bunch of cards means that reckless yeah. greed doesn't really matter as long as you're able to get that loop up and the force that this deck has access to are pretty impressive of course we've got like Ouroboros uh because you're usually reborning three off of hysteric party Right. Uh, we've, of course, got uh, Lightning Kidori, which we saw. Uh, we've got some weird cards like Ice Beast Zero Fine. Uh, it is a wing beast. Yep. Which is like Dark Ruler no more, but you still get to do stuff. And because we have access to not only the seven pool, but a seven pool that didn't exist during the time that rulers were everywhere, it means that we're playing some nonsense like Master of Blades and such. This guy's an asshole. Yeah, he's kind of a jerk. Um, unfortunately, uh, just not enough. Um is pretty interruptible. Uh, your Harpy Channeler does kind of have to resolve, and if your opponent has like quick removal, like Fate, it can be a yeah. really rough matchup for you, as we saw.
But, yeah. uh, you know, still an interesting deck and uh, was powerful enough to take down a YCS. Yeah, and I think that was probably just due to multiple reasons. I think uh, there was two Harpy decks that top aided and one of them ended up winning, which is the version that you're playing. I love the synergy, too, that you can just, like, hunting ground pop your own Hysteric Sign just to trigger it. Like, that's fun. Yeah, I, I think this probably just caught a lot of people off guard at the time as well, just, like, because no one probably would have respected this deck in the slightest to actually be a relevant contender. So... At the time, you know, yeah, it may not have been the best deck, but that's where a rogue deck has its advantages, right? If you know mm -hmm. the format inside and out and you are able to actually capitalize on that with your opponent also not knowing what your cards do, it can go a long way. And that's what we saw at YCS Brazil 2014. Harpies took it. And uh, if, if that game two was any showcase as to why that was the case, I wouldn't, you know, be too surprised to see that it won. So guys, that's gonna wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout out the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout outs to Shadow1317, Moto, Tim 0 x 3 Cameron Smith, MBT Play Medulce, Chaotic Meatball Par 2, Pony Stark, Synchro Guide, Dan the Man Hoban, I Ship MBT and Simo, Draconic Rock Slide, Phoenix the Immortal, Jordan Coons, Iron Bladesman, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, David Liu, Dylan Hunter, Cody Bretz, John Two Based, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Zerius Business, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, MBT Caught Injecting His Fairy Lily, Hornet TC Gaming, Valen Jack. And thanks for the sleeves, Dad. Orange, you glad I didn't say Alpha Tribute Ben 10. Matthew Brady, Max, Twinkle Muncher, Eater of Crayons, Lou Bon, Yoda Bon, Helios 515, the anti big brain Ben K OTK play, MBT funding the Irish with his Rothschild wealth. That's his Roth IRA. Simping for Simo, Stolfin Amethyst, Nicholas Carpenter, Simo's Harem of Sexy Yugi Tubers, LGM BTQ, Nim Noodle, Mallow Branch of the Burning Tunnels, Stella and Zoe Vermilion, Wonder Waffle, James Keen. Skull Servant and the Wandering Doomed are boyfriends. MBT cancel by all community soon. Cancel by all committee soon. Cancel by all players soon. Dalton not reading cards makes the game interesting and you know it. The Undertaker versus Simo and MBT. Wait, play the concert video one more time. Cayman CJ, Hunter Reed, Shrugs IX, the Crystal Beast Enthusiast, ITF, Dark Echo, Corvain, Jake1779 is bad at Yu-Gi-Oh! Josh Haynes, TJ Starman, and Simus Engage. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.